met a gypsy. You talked about the struggles of the last like couple years. Uh, what what mm-hmm. was that? Like a lot of people, because okay, this is the narrative. Oh, he just fucking left Alden, bro. Of course he's gonna suck. It's like he's not training anymore. Yeah. So like, I guess like, what was it? And I think the team stuff probably had like a, a bit to do with it. Like kind of like lo- that getting more fragmented. But I guess like, yeah, what was the the reasons behind the struggles in your eyes those last couple of years? Um, wait, am I too far from the mic? Just pull it. Um, for me, I feel like in 2018, I like. I won that championship and it's it's not like you could end it, you know? <laughs> like that yeah. was my it all like end all goal, you know? And when I did it, I woke up the next morning and I was like, I don't feel any different, you know? I don't really like mm-hmm. I, I, I thought it was maybe going to make me want to be like kind of like a savage and work hard and just do it over and over and over again and it never really made me feel that way it just felt like another day and the tough part about that was is i expected it to be so much more you know Mm. and that was something that like it took me a while to come to terms with and try and figure out what i really wanted to do you know Mm. and i think working with alden and stuff like that that type of environment it was tough for me to figure out what I wanted to do while being there, you know? Mm. Um, and I come to find out I really enjoy racing dirt bikes and I really enjoy trying to be my best. But for a while there, I did not like the attention. It's like, and everyone is just like going into the next year. They wanted you to do good. And all these sponsors want you to do all this stuff. Like, dude, it was just like, I, I, nothing against like my sponsors and stuff but i like more of a mellow setting you know i just enjoy that a little bit more and i told bobby i'm like dude you guys are putting too much on me when i already got enough going on in my head to try and recover and comprehend Mm. what this whole last year was and then move on to this new year and try and be just as good or better than i was the year before and i told him i'm like if you guys keep pushing it's going to be tough for me you know it's just making it tougher you know all these obligations and stuff and i remember going to anaheim one and they were like like we need to do the championship ring presentation you're the past champion you gotta do this and feld was doing all this shit and i was just like bro i have to race today and you guys are making me do all this stuff you know i have the number one plate and all this stuff and i was like I told Bobby it was just too much for me. It was it was literally too much, and I wanted to do anything I could, anything. Like, I'm telling you, I was desperate to do anything I could to get the spotlight off me, and that was really, really tough for me, and so I did anything I could. I got the whole shot and went back to 18th. Mm. Didn't fall. Really? Like, and so, like, you... So, like, we, was there, like, a purposeful, almost, like, sabotaging your results in a way so that people, like, wouldn't talk about you? Oh, or? 100%. Really? 100%. Yeah. I just was like, I don't give a fuck right now. Like, I, re- I really just felt that way. And then, oh, it was a terrible next week between me and Bob. Jesus. But then the next weekend, I almost won Baggett past me. And then I broke my arm. And... I was like, I hate to say this, but like the truth is, is that I'm thankful that I got hurt, you know, just because I needed that, I needed that time to really be kind of cool with it. And then we moved on and I had the best outdoor season I've ever had. You know, I got third in points and I got a bunch of podiums and, and stuff like that. And then moving into the next Supercross season, um, just still wasn't it just in within the team and everything like that all the stuff Bobby was dealing with and stuff I I didn't want to go back to Alden's I didn't want to do any of that I wanted to work hard I wanted to do my thing but I just needed a change of pace and I really needed it at that point to be successful that year and I just I was in in limbo because 
husky we had such a, a long agreement you know so mm. it was tough for me and i i did put my best foot forward and i showed up every day and i tried my hardest but mentally i just don't think i was there you know mm. and i and even going into this year i was like is this move really going to make the difference for me to you know um want to put my heart into it and the it was refreshing and right now i feel like i'm in a better spot than i've ever been and and it's cool, you know, and, but the, the tough part is, is, um, Husky is good enough to win championships. You know, they are mm. the gr a great team. They got a good bike and there's nothing against them. It was all, mm. it was all on me. Um, but I, I tried my best and, and I just wasn't that good in, in that environment. I just really yeah. wasn't. And, but I did give it my all all the way to the end. And I was really bummed last year that I wasn't able to get a good outdoor season with them and, and give them my all. And I got hurt and it's kind of all she wrote. And now we're on to a new chapter and we're moving on. Man, I think, uh, I think probably like to just go back, like the root of the, of the problem is probably a lack of perspective that I guess you just, I guess you don't know, like maybe you can be told this, but uh, the fact that yeah you wake up in the morning and you feel like it's going to be different than what it is like there's some kind of expectation and the emptiness that you could feel from that and I've spoken to so many people that have had that exact same feeling it's almost like mm -hmm. one of the evils of sport is that you think that there's like this holy grail there's like something to be attained when you win something like mm -hmm. that and you've spent your whole life doing it and it's sort of almost like now you've got this perspective of like well just racing my dirt bike like that's the goal and it's like you know there's you can look through buddhism and stoic philosophy and you can look through all of these kind of like ancient thought processes mm -hmm. and it's basically they all point to like there's no such thing as the destination there's just only the path or there's only the process yeah and it's like when you love the mm -hmm. process then you know winning the championship doesn't become this thing that you like obviously you care about it but it's almost just like another part of the process and i think that you know when you kind of yeah. to wake up in the morning and to feel like winning a championship the thing that you've done like spent your whole life trying to do didn't really give you mm -hmm. any extra fulfillment like that's such a kick in the guts yeah like it's um yeah, it's it's tough because like if I'm real realistically like I've resented that whole championship to to this point because that because of that feeling the day after you know mm. it's like something that I really I I believe that I would have more wins and more podiums if I would if I wouldn't have won it right now one hundred percent just because I've resented it that much that it wanted me to be so far away from it. Mm. And I finally have come to terms with it, you know, and I, I feel back in the position to be able to do it. And it took longer than I expected. And I'm thankful that I'm still able to make it to the other side of it. But to this day, I have no idea where my, my championship gear is. I have no idea where my championship number one plate is. I have no idea where my championship trophy is. I literally just like telling people they could have it damn that's I know, crazy i have no idea where any of that stuff is yeah do you know other guys that that's just that? no nah, i i don't i don't know dude to be honest you walk into all these other guys homes and i feel like it's a museum yeah, it's a, of their achievements and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so and mine is definitely not that but it's uh it's the uh, i've upgraded from the tv with the cardboard box you know so okay. it's on the wall now yeah. yeah so uh but yeah there's some trophies around but nothing too crazy or anything but i don't know any guys that are like that you know um, I know a lot of guys like their stuff and things like that, but, um, I don't know anyone that has really felt like they've resented it. Like I have, but, um, it's, I'm over it now and I'm, I've, I'm really proud of myself for that championship, you know? Um, mm. but right now I, I've, I want to make it sweeter by, by making some more runs at some more championships. And Dude, I feel like the I next one you get will fit, will feel so good. Yeah, I'm really hoping to get another one and I know I'm going to put everything I can into it and it's tough, but I feel like I, it's my first year on this bike and I feel like I can only get better the more I learn it and stuff like that. So 
that's, uh, you know, I'm going to try my best. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.